me that perhaps I should have titled this Take Heed How You Hear, rather than Motivations of the Hearer. But I want to talk about the motivations by which we hear things. You know, why is it that we, again, do the things that we do? We understand from Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But why is it that we are hearers? You know, it, I, it came to my attention just yesterday, I believe it was, uh, or the day before. The days kind of run together, but uh, recently uh, I had uh, showed my son something from time to time. We go back and forth showing each other things we find online that are funny or noteworthy. And I was showing him something, and, and, uh, and he said, I already showed you that. Uh, and, and it totally, I totally forgot about that. And uh, realized that when he showed it to me, I probably just let it go in one ear and out the other. It was probably one of those situations where I was sitting there doing something, and, and he came to show me something, and I didn't, you know, I heard it, I saw it, but I didn't really take it in and pay attention. It didn't, it didn't stick in my mind. And, you know, to, to varying degrees, we uh, bring things into our, into our minds, into our hearts, and they stick. Uh, there are things that we'll never forget, and there are things that are just a fleeting path through our minds. And the scriptures need to be those things that, uh, that stick in our minds. We, 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 when we come together like this on Sunday morning, as we're commanded I hope that the, the word that you hear is something that you, that you reflect upon. That perhaps you take notes, if not on paper, in your head. And you take note of the things that, that, uh, that are said in the scriptures, not by me, but just of the scriptures, that you need to go back and look at in, throughout the week and throughout the coming coming days, months, and years of your lives. So the things that we need to revisit from time to time. And, and one of the important things that we can talk about is, is what motivates us to hear? What motivates us to, to listen to the word? Or, you know, as we've talked about many times before in lessons, you know, why are you here? Why is it that you do the things that you do religiously. So as we think about the motivations of the hearer, um, if we can get the clicker to do its thing, uh, we want to first talk about those that might be motivated to hear out of curiosity. And for that, we turn to Acts chapter 17, which is a familiar, again, familiar passage of scripture that, that we've talked about many times in our studies. But Acts chapter 17, if we turn over to there, Acts chapter 17 and starting at verse 18, we read in Acts 17 starting at verse 18, Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him. And some said, What does this babbler want to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods, because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak. For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considered the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I proclaim to you. If we go just a little bit further, we see kind of the end of the end of the story here in Acts chapter 17 of verse 32. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. You know, there are those that are just curious and they want to put everything into their heads. They want to know things. I, I am one of those people uh, uh, that, that likes to hear things and know things. I spend my time 
uh, outside of the scriptures, in my, my recreational time, if you will, uh, most of my family believes that I'm pretty boring because I spend my time listening to uh, podcasts and, and other preachers speaking, and, and, uh, and I listen to people from different backgrounds uh, and different uh, walks of life, if you will, talking about their situation. And, and I'm curious about what makes them tick. I'm curious about what makes them do the things that they do. And that curiosity causes me to want to hear what they have to say. And there are those that, that have that curiosity, and I hope you have a curiosity of the scriptures, but hopefully you don't end up like those on the Areopagus that say, that mock and say, we will hear you again. They'll come back later. We've heard enough of you for now. We'll, we'll think about this and, and, and you come back later and talk a little bit more. You know, we sometimes do that to the scriptures, don't we? We read the scriptures and then we close them and, and, and off to the next thing. You know, it is important that we engage ourselves in, in daily Bible study, but that study needs to be more than I've just read the scripture. That study needs to be such that we begin to start thinking about what we've read and thinking about what was the point of this? Why was it written? You know, at what, when was it written? And to whom was it written? And what was the situation surrounding the writing of this? You know, we, we need to think about those things. Uh, I was recently at, a, at an event where there, some religious people got up and, and, and prayed and some had little, little, uh, little talks, about, motivational talks. And they brought some scripture into these things. And I kept thinking, well, yes, that's right. But what was the purpose of that? Why was that being said? And who was that being said to? Because I don't think that applies to the people that you're talking to. You know, and, and we need to think about those things. We need to be motivated by that curiosity. Curiosity is not a bad thing. In fact, every one of us that is uh, in Christ we probably started our journey uh, seeking Christ out of that curiosity. We, we heard something from someone. We saw something in someone uh, that made us think, hmm, they're different. Or that's different. I've never heard that before. Let's, let's hear more about that. It's just like those at the Areopagus. But you understand there are those people, even yet today, that, and they, they house themselves within our institutions of higher learning mostly, that just want to know things to know things. They don't really want to think about the end of things. They don't really want to think about how it really uh, reflects upon the world and society and, and, and what is actually true. They just want to know things. Uh, I know people that have spent their entire lives in school to know things, but to no avail because they never did anything with it. In fact, I know a person who went to who went to school for many years uh, for nursing and among other things. He went to school, had uh, several, several degrees under his belt, if, as I understand it, but he never used any of it. He never went and, and put that, those things into practice. He just liked to know things. He was a very intelligent individual. And there are, again, those in the world today, maybe some of us that have that curiosity. A curious mind is good. But we have to actually follow through and we have to hear not just for the, for the sake of understanding uh, and, and, and gathering up more words in our vocabulary, but to understand what they mean and understand how they affect us. One of the motivations, again, is, is this curiosity, but it can't just be for curiosity's sake. One of the other motivations that you know, people might seek to hear is for a desire for, for gain. In Acts chapter 24, just a few, few pages over in your Bible, we read of Felix and how he was kind of looking for some gain. He was willing to listen for a little bit in Acts chapter 24, starting at verse 24. And it says, after some days when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, 
Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now, for when I have a, con a convenient time, I will call for you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given, to, given him by Paul, that he might release him. Therefore, he sent for him more often and conversed with him. And you know what this reminds me of? It's not a perfect analogy, but it reminds me of those in the, in the world today who they may even listen to the scriptures for a little bit, but they're expecting that you're going to give them something afterwards. There are those that, that make the rounds to religious organizations or even just help organizations and they'll listen to whatever is being said, but there's going to be some, something in it for them in the end. In fact, I know that the Salvation Army does, does sorts of things like this where they'll give a meal. But one of, the, one of the caveats to the meal, it's sort of an understood thing, I suppose you could get up and walk out, after you ate, but you have to listen to a little bit of a, of a lesson from them, and then, you, and then you proceed to be able to get some more things from them. And there are people that are there religiously, to use the term, uh, every week or every time this thing happens, and they're there, and the words are going in, and the words might rattle around for a little while, and then they, they might come out. And, uh, but they're there because of the thing that they're being given. And this is just something that is, that is human nature. You know, when, uh, when I owned a business, uh, there, for some time we, we had a, a booth set up at different fairs in different places uh, where a lot of people were that, that fit the demographic of our, of our customers and we were trying to get our name out there. And people would come and listen to what you had to say if you had something to give them. And it didn't matter what it was. It could be a trinket. It could be anything. And people were coming and, and, and taking these things. Because it's just within uh, human beings to, to want something for what they give. If they give their time, they want something out of it. And it's usually something that is, that is superficial. But the scriptures hold something so much deeper there is something in it for us. It's eternal life. It is an understanding of our Savior. It is something that is greater and more valuable than anything that any person could give here on this earth. But uh, nonetheless, there are those that are listening for a desire for gain. And we need to ask ourselves with each of these points as we go through them, you know, am I here just simply out of curiosity? Am I here to get something out of it, you know, monetarily? Am I, am I here to get something uh, out of it just for some, some gain? Maybe it's a, a status. Maybe it's a gain in status. Maybe it's, as I've seen before, not in the Lord's Church, thankfully, but I've seen it in other religious groups that I've been a part of many years ago, where it became a networking place. It became, it became like a, a meeting of the CEOs in the town, uh, and they would network with each other. So, you know, as they were doing business, they'd say, oh, yeah, well, I go to church with so-and-so, and they can call them up and ask a favor, and, and, and it, it, pro it, it helps to promote their business, and it helps to advance uh, their, their business game. Uh, some people, unfortunately, do that with religious things. But the gain that we want, the gain that I hope you're here for, is the gain of the knowledge of truth. The gain that comes from seeking after the Lord. You know, another thing that people might listen for is to trap the, the, the speaker. You know, there could be, and I've seen this happen before, where people will listen for a little bit, and they're listening for something to to catch the speaker in so that, they can, so that they can tear them apart, so that they can go after them like a ravenous wolf and, and try to tear apart their argument. And we see this you know, sometimes uh, in, in debates, and I'm one that loves to, loves to, wa loves to watch a good debate. I, I sort, of, uh, sort of regret the fact that there aren't many religious and biblical debates anymore. Uh, but on the other hand, 
On the other hand, when you really stop and think about what happens during those times of debate, you have the people on this side of the room that are with this guy, and the people on this side of the room that are with the other guy, and they're all just nitpicking and looking for holes in, in each other's stories, uh, or each other's uh, uh, lessons, if you will, and, uh, and that's all they're after. They're not listening for an understanding. They're not actually listening to find the truth and to find out what is true, but they're, they enjoy the argument. Uh, there's a, an adrenaline rush that comes with that sort of thing. You know, I come from, I come from a long line of, of hagglers and arguers, uh, and, and there's, a, there's a great rush that comes with, with, uh, with, with being able to haggle with somebody and, 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 and go back and forth with somebody over something that is something that is addictive to some. And uh, there are those that lay those traps in their mind. Let, let's find out what we can pick apart here today. And again, you can pick apart what I say. Uh, I'm nothing. But uh, you have to really understand that this is the word of God we're dealing with. And what the word of God says matters more than anything. So... Even, you know, e even if I do everything in my power to tell you the truth, it's, it, it, and you may trust me, uh, it is dependent upon you to look to make sure I'm telling you the truth, to, uh, to look to make sure that I'm telling you the truth, not just to trap me, but to, but to make sure that uh, you understand the truth. Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 12, says, And they sought to lay hands on him, but feared the multitude, for they knew he had spoken the parable against them. So they left him and went away. They sent him to some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his words. So there were those that were seeking to, to find Jesus, find some fault in Jesus. And they understood that they, they couldn't get him now, but they wanted someone else to give it a shot. Let's see what we can find on him. And if you look... This is still happening today you know, to step outside of the religious realm for a minute. You know, think of all the things that happen in the political realm that uh, where people seek to trap each other. It, it doesn't even have to be the political realm. It could be anything. Uh, if you hold a stance in something, uh, someone else is going to try to trap you up in your words and and cause you to uh, or, or, or cause a fight. And it really stems from hatred and jealousy. When it, when it comes right down to it, those that wanted Christ's life, those that wanted him dead because of the, the, the threat that he was and the threat that his teaching was to them, they hated him. They were jealous because they wanted to maintain the status that they had in life. Uh, those are the things that were at the root of these traps and there's nothing different today. So if you, I don't believe it to be the case, but if you happen to be sitting here today, if there be anybody that is just seeking to trap the speaker, go ahead, but realize that it doesn't matter uh, because it's ultimately the word of God that says what it says. And you can have a fight with God about that. But we need to continue to think a little bit more about our motivation. You know, the curiosity, that desire for gain, the, 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 to trap someone in their own words. And then there's also maybe the admiration of the speaker, kind of the opposite of what we were just speaking about. Perhaps there are those that, that go and hear just because of the speaker. Uh, and there are, admittedly, there are people that I really enjoy listening to. Uh, there, there are those speakers in the world, not even just in the, in the church, not even religiously, there are just those people that I could listen to read the back, I could listen to them read the back of a uh, cereal box, and I'd probably listen to it, because it, it's just interesting. The inflection of their voice, the way that they, they can uh, carry on the, the, uh, the words with such eloquence, there are those people. In fact, just last night, uh, Angela, myself, and, and uh, Anderson, we went to a dinner where there was a guest speaker, the person that, that I listen to from time to time, whom I admire for at least his uh, ability to reason logically and is not a religious 
not a religious endeavor at all. It's just, it's just that I like to listen to him talk. And he was in town. So I, I decided to go and do that. And, and, and I went to listen to him because of that admiration for, of his ability. But more than that, you have to stop and listen to what the message is. And there are some good things in that message, but there's so much more in the message that we're speaking about here today in Christ. There's so much more in what we're hearing and what we see in the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, if you'll go with me there, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and then at verse 11, it says, For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brother, and that those of Chloe's household, that there were our contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? And again, there are those that just follow a person for whatever reason. And if you, especially Paul, if you think about Paul and think about what he uh, did after his conversion, you realize that he over and over again spoke about him being nothing. You know, that he was that he was at the bottom of the barrel, that you, know, you needed to listen to him because of the words that, that he had were from, from the Lord, but not to put him up on a pedestal. And uh, you know, again, there are, there are those that just follow the person and put people up on pedestals. I have seen this, unfortunately, in, in the Lord's church. There, 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 there are those that if the preacher leaves one place, and if it's close by where, they, where he moves to, uh, there are those that will just kind of follow him over because they're used to hearing this person speak. They enjoy listening to him. And so it becomes clear that at least on some level, uh, there is a following of the person. Now, uh, again, you know, if, if you decide uh, to, to move from one, from one group to another, uh, of worshipers of Christ, uh, you know, have valid reasons for that. And, you know, I've done that in the past. I have, I have moved the place that I worship because of things that I saw that were wrong with what was going on. And, and that's, that's, our, uh, that's our prerogative to do that. But let's make sure that we're not just following people. Let's, not, let's make sure that we're following Christ and his word and the truth. Make sure that that is what, we, what motivates us and what, what helps us to seek uh, it helps us to seek our path each and every day. As we continue to think about motivation, sometimes we read, sometimes we hear because we want to solve a problem. Sometimes we uh, just look to it for the issues of life. And, and that is something that... Uh, you know, each, each and every one of us has probably done uh, in our lives where we have looked to the scriptures to find some comfort in a time of trouble. You know, as we, we look a little bit into the scriptures here in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, let's go over there. And, and this is a familiar, a familiar passage. And really, we understand that it's speaking of vanity, the vanity of life, the vanity of, of all the things that we, that we can put first in our life. But starting at verse 8, it says, Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. All is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and what was written was upright words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd. And further, my son, be admonished by these, of, many, of, make, of making many books there is no end, and much study is wearisome to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. You know, there, are, there, there is every possibility that with the problems of this life that we can look into the scriptures and find, and find wise words. 
what should I do about this issue in my life? Now, we, we, we likely are not going to open up the scriptures and, and, and find an exact paragraph that says, you know, for you, let's just say James, for you, James, on this day, you're having this problem, so this is what you should do. It's not going to be spelled out like that. But when we study the scriptures and we come to understand the, the message that is being taught, when we understand that concept that is being set forth, the, the, the many concepts of righteousness that are being set forth there, uh, when we understand those things, we'll have a direction in which we should walk. We'll have more clarity in what Christ looks like. We'll have more clarity of, of, of the path that Christ has set forth for us. And, and a lot of those problems go away. A lot of those problems fall by the wayside because we have our focus on Christ. And that's a wonderful motivation to have uh, to look into the scriptures. But one thing we don't want to do is to just, you know, we have an issue in our life, so let's run to the Bible. Let's run to the people that we know that may know the Bible. And let's hear what they have to say and then turn around and, and, and don't look at it again until we need help again. You know, there's, there's that, uh, I've mentioned it before uh, in lessons, there's a song that speaks to uh, uh, someone in trouble and in need of something and, and they, you know, are calling out to Jesus and, uh, you know, they, they, they want that help right now. But... When I think of that song, it, it kind of bothers me because I realize it's kind of like what people do in the world, and we've all perhaps done this, where we look to God when we have a problem. Our prayer life is probably really good when things are going wrong in our lives. But when things are going good, we don't have much time to think about Him. But we do need Him to solve our problems. The problem of sin has been solved by Him, and all we have to do is seek him. We need to be properly motivated to do these things. And I hope you can kind of see that each of these things, you know, are good in and of themselves, but they can be twisted to a place where they become, where they become a problem. Our last point in the lesson is yours. I know you're used to three-point lessons from me. I know I threw you a curveball here with six. <clears throat> but hopefully I didn't speak too long. Uh, so as we think about the last motivation we want to talk about is a love of the truth. I hope that each and every one of you are here because you have a love of the truth. I hope that you find that I'm speaking the truth. That's my goal. I hope that you find that the scriptures are the only source of truth. In the world today, and I know I've mentioned this years ago and several times since, that there's this movement in the world that everybody can have their own truth. What is true to you doesn't have to be true for me and doesn't have to be true for your neighbor. We can all just have our own truth and live in our own reality and, and just let that be. But that's just not how truth works. There is truth. And then there are things that are not true. It's just that black and white. And we need to be those that love the truth. We need to be those that, that cling again to what is good. And, and, and one more scripture here. Let's go back over to the book of Romans. And um, Romans chapter 12. And at verse 9. Romans 12 at verse 9 says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. And cling to what is good. You know, you can, you can tell truth for what it is. You can tell that something is true because it aligns itself with truth. And it doesn't waver. You know, we understand there are scriptures that tell us that, that, that God does not waver and that he who wavers is driven like the wind and tossed and is unstable in all his ways. You know, the... Uh, we, we need to have this love of truth and we need to cling to those things that we can find in the scriptures, that we can find in the handbook of truth, if you will, that we have in front of us. 
So we need to think about our motivations, or at least that's what I want you to, uh, my aim here today is that we would think about our motivation. Why is it again that we do what we do? Are we hearing the word of God simply out of curiosity and for curiosity's sake? Are we here for some gain in some way? Are we here to trap the speaker? Are we here because you like to hear me talk? Uh, are we here because we have a problem to solve and we'll be gone when things settle down? Are we here because we have a love of the truth? I hope that we have a love for a truth and I hope that we turn each and every one of these motivations and all the other motivations that a person can have, I hope we turn these things into something that can be serving our Lord, something that is pleasing to him that we look to him for all of the issues of this life and that we look to him and we, we share his truth, we share the truth with others. We share his gospel with those around us. And in fact, if you're sitting here today and you're outside of Christ, now's the time. You know, we, we understand that, that, as we mentioned before, that faith comes by hearing. You come to know and believe in Christ because you hear his word. And his word is, his word is special. I'm convinced of that, that his word has a, a way of working on our hearts. He's our creator and he knows what makes us tick and he knows how to change our hearts. If we just put his word into our heart. If you believe that he is and you're willing to confess him before men, you're willing to repent and turn away from sinful things and focus on Christ, if you're willing to be obedient to the point of baptism for the remission of sins, so that you can be raised to walk in that newness of life, now's the time the water is ready behind me. If you're a Christian and you've realized that perhaps your motivations have changed and that you need to get things back on the right path, for the most part that's between you and God and I hope you seek from this day forward to, uh, to do better. We've all been in that spot. But if you need the prayers of the saints for any reason, if you need the help and support of the family that God has given us here on this earth in his church, then don't hesitate to take advantage of that. But come forward as we stand and sing.